Hey guys, my name is Zach. I'm currently working on a purse for a lady friend. Um, uh, talked to her and worked out uh, what it'll look like. It'll be slightly angular, one side a little bit longer than the other, and to accompany or to fit her uh, glasses and everything, I'll have a little pocket on the side so that it doesn't slide down, fall over, and get crushed. What I've come up with so far. If you look it back up. Is this. I built a full size concept model. Uh, it's attached on the sides like this. It has a flap on the front to close it. The closure mechanism, or let's say the closure size, I'm not 100% on, but I'll see uh, when I get everything cut out and stitched together. And on the inside, so far I don't have the part for glasses yet, but it's going to be there in the final model. So pretty small, shouldn't take too long, and uh, I hope it turns out well, and hopefully the video is interesting. Alright, so first I'm going to do the uh, tabs which will hold the D-rings for the straps like this Let's see like that and as you can see here uh, they're gonna have uh, two of these screw rivets on the sides of all the parts here um, but first I'm going to sand it down then I'm going to go over it with edge paint and uh, paint it all before I glue it together, and then uh, put the rivets through when I finally, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to stitch it first, just around the edge, to make sure the edge paint uh, doesn't separate it, and then I will uh, connect it with the side of the bag once I have those pieces cut out and the holes punched. I'm just going to rough it up a little bit. I'm going to use the Giardini uh, semi-dense max mat, max mat semi-dense. So they just need to be a little bit rough, just for better adhesion. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it like that. Just for a moment, I thought about uh, rounding the curves, maybe putting a point on it. No point in overcomplicating the bag, part that uh, I don't think she'll notice. And it's still going to look nice. Just going to rough it up a little bit. Sand it down, make it smooth. The Max Mat edge paint helps a lot anyway. smooth out any imperfections. Can you see that? Yeah. What I'm using uh, for this bag is from a and &A Crack LTD or a and &A Crack and Sons <laughs> from uh, England. They're a, a leather wholesaler. I don't think they're a tannery. They're a leather wholesaler. They're very helpful. I'm using uh, the Madison uh, 1.2 to 1.4 millimeters. It's not too firm. I'd say it's medium, uh, medium strength. Uh, it smells very good, feels very good, very high quality. Didn't see any imp imperfections on the hide. And I'll show that a little bit later, the hide when I'm uh, cutting out the rest of the pieces. All right, and now here I'm just going to measure the test piece I did. Uh, try to figure out the distances 
for my holes down here. See where I want to uh, punch it, how far I want to go from the edge. And my furthest hole in is about 2.1 millimeters. Other ones, uh, one and a quarter. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.1 centimeters, one and a quarter uh, centimeters away. So I'll mark those beforehand on the piece, on the pieces. Friction pen, pilot friction, pretty great. You can mark and then use a mat, uh, mat or lighter to later quickly remove any uh, marks you made. Remove that. And then 1.25. Okay. 2.1. And then one point two five. Yeah. And they're about how wide are they? Side. They are supposed to be supposed to be nineteen wide. Seem like eighteen and a half. Eighteen would be nine. Split the difference. How about there? Okay. I don't want to mark the edge too hard. Okay, so now we have two marks. Looks pretty good. For now, I'm just going to line this up like this. I have lots of little alligator clamps. And just use a spare piece of leather. Go here. Line it up. See on both sides, pretty flush. It's on this side too. What I can see on the inside, you can't see too well here. It's pretty flush, so I'll poke some holes through. I'm just gonna mark it there. Second one I've conveniently covered up now. I'll use this to raise it up a little bit. Now we have both of them. Perfect, we'll just repeat it on the other side. Definitely 19, perfect. Nine and a half. 
Go there. And this one. Nothing about. And about there. Looks right. Feels right. Perfect. Need a better piece of leather. Something a little bit less thick. There we go. Let's line this up. There's a slight height difference, but I'll leave it with that. Right now, I can find my, there we go, same paper. So it'll sit nice and flush when the edge paint is applied. Luckily the edge paint will clean up a lot of that because of its uh, density. Okay. Thankfully. There are the marks on this side, not the sides. We're going to use this piece now. I want to see the marks a little better. Sides are good. Sides are good. Ends are good. Let's punch the holes. I apologize if it's uh, hard to see all this in the video. These are my first videos, so I'm uh, getting the hang of the camera a little bit. And maybe I'll get a better setup if this uh, is interesting for people. Hopefully. Hopefully it's interesting and hopefully there'll be lots more videos. Alright, punching through. Perfect. Real quick. See the marks on the sides. I don't know if you can see them from there. And they're gone. Do the same here. A little rubbing. And they're gone. Wonderful. Now time to edge paint. I'm edge painting these. Rest is just a distraction at this point. I'm using the uh, Giordini edge paint roller. Put a little bit of uh, machine oil in the little slot down here where it's sliding. Smooth it out, it seems to help a little bit. And I have some Giordini, Giordini Max Matte Tan I'll be using at the end. Thinned it out a little bit. But first, I'm using the base coat. Semi-dense. I'm just going to use an awl to mix it around a little bit because I do not have anything else at the moment. Probably fine, doesn't need mixing, but just to be sure. You never know. Okay. 
in the process for this edge paint is uh, some rougher sandpaper at the beginning to help the base coat to adhere. I don't know if you can see this. There you go. I'm just going to go over. One moment. goes on pretty well. Go back and forth a couple of times. Okay, go over all the important parts. From what I can see, it's good. Just in this portion. Uh, there we go. It helps a lot if you get it uh, on the corners too, connecting both sides at the same time. And this uh, base coat is not thinned. There's an adhesion aid for uh, for tougher leather, leather <laughs> like uh, oil tanned, or uh, yeah, yeah, basically that. But since this is not oil tanned, from what I understand, it's <laughs> supposedly pure vegetable tanned leather. Although it has amazing uh, water resistance pro properties. Uh, it should not need adhesion aid, so we're going to let that dry real quick. It says half an hour, but they seem to be pretty good after 20 minutes. I'm just going to find <sighs> something to stick it on. not perfect at all <laughs> but it's all I got right now no oh that's not Let's see this okay where is my second piece there's no second piece <laughs> okay so I'm going to wait for a little bit to drip off. If you can see it, you cannot. Wait for the excess to drip. From my trial and error with this product, it seems like you have to let the excess come off a little bit. Catch the overflow if there's any. And then you get a pretty good result. You don't want to have too much on there at once. Or not only will it overflow, but it will dry weird. Even uh, single layers of leather will have a line down the center. I guess they're being pulled to the outside because of the adhesion. If you want to connect the uh, edges. And I might put a second layer on this, but I might not. <laughs> Depending how the first layer looks. The whole idea of the uh, Max Matte series, the dense and the semi-dense 
just to reduce the number of coats. And I'll end up putting first the base coat, and then uh, two coats of the color, maybe two coats of the extra matte, or one coat of color and one, two coats of extra matte. The extra matte seems to, uh, you know, not only is it matte in color, but it also lets uh, metal parts slide better. So it seems like it's appropriate for the D-rings. Put two coats on just to uh, make sure that they don't wear out too fast. And it looks pretty good, what I can see. I will let it dry if I can find a piece of leather to put it on. Yeah, put it on here. Just for the moment. That'll dry pretty fast. Again, I'm using the Max Matte Base Coat Semi Dense. And now, between the uh, between colors and coats, you have to clean the edge roller. So, best thing for it, a toothbrush, <laughs> hard toothbrush goes goes quick. Just brush it off with a little bit of water. No solvents needed, and uh, you know, no no smell. So, let me do that right now. All right, and I just realized I forgot to mark the edges for the stitching. I will be marking them two and a half centimeters in with about, what did I decide on? 0.5, no. For these I'll go 0.3. And yeah, 0.3 from the edge is where the stitches will be. I have I believe three millimeter stitching needles. If I can find my pen. They're two and a half centimeters in. With point three from each edge. And I don't have a what is it, an edge groover. Actually I have an edge groover, but my part that would just mark the line is broken. It's or lost. So I don't have one. So I'm just going to use the scratch all to mark my lines. It should be just as good. Hope I don't slip. I would like to not slip. So now the stitches are marked, I'll save you the pain of watching me do the next one. I'll repeat the process and then we'll have lines for the stitching. I will punch those uh, holes once I have the edges done and the rivet set in just to hold it in place. 
All right, now I've uh, cleaned off the uh, edge paint roller. Next step in using the Giardini Max Matte uh, dense or semi-dense edge paint is to look at the edge, sand it with a uh, thousand grit or higher. Here I'm using 1200, just lightly give the uh, next layer of edge paint something to adhere to, and at least make the adherence slightly better. And for my tests with uh, this Max Matte semi dense. Adherence is pretty good. It only ever comes off when I uh, purposefully tear it off. You know. So that's at least good. In this step, you can also uh, smooth out any irregularities, bumps in the uh, base coat. There's not too many, but there may be a few. I don't know if you can see it there, it does turn out pretty well. And for marking the uh, stitching lines, I still have a little bit of uh, well, the pen mark. So let's quickly move that. All right, move any maybe dust from the process. Make sure that there's. Hmm. All right, so now I'll put on the first first uh, layer of semi dense tan. I diluted it a little bit with water. You can see it here. Put it in a small container. Uh, supposedly that'll uh, keep it from getting too thick too fast. From my experience, it does tend to dry out. I've only used the sample. Uh, I'm trying to get a little bit extra off. The sample trial pack. You can order a sample trial pack from the company. And it's pretty good. Uh, you only get black, but it will show you how nicely the paint goes on. I believe you only get dents. Yeah, you only get dents, but it's still a good representation. Semi dense apparently has a different. Um, well, it reacts differently, uh, different levels of shear. So if you're painting quickly, it'll maintain its uh, density while the semi-dense is made more for hand painting and uh, quickly uh, applying the paint will cause it to thin out due to the shear stresses so keep that in mind from what i've heard the 
semi-dense is more suited towards hand painting. And the dense is more for machine work, but of course both can use for be used for both. At least from what I understand. <laughs> but I am somewhat somewhat of a beginner, so take everything I say with grain of salt. If the edges turn out badly, please forgive me. <laughs> so I'll let this one dry. We'll go for the second one now. But I won't put you through that. Uh, talk to you again afterward. All right, now the first layer of the tan coat is uh, no, the tan color. It's dried on the second layer. No, oh, before I forget, <laughs> it is important to uh, sand between coats again to increase the adherence and to reduce any lines. You may get lines that are visible if your coats are too thick. You can see that. Sorry, I'm just getting used to the uh, location of the camera at the moment. There we go. So I'm evening it out. I did have a line down the center. Here, there's not so much. But. So I'll have to roughen it for the next layer for the adherence. Here you can clearly see, let's see if we can get in the light. There's a line down the center, although it's only one layer. So I will attempt to smooth that out a little bit. And it was because the paint was a little thick. So I may add a couple of drops of water to it. This is uh, oh, distilled water, so. There should be no minerals which mess up the color of the leather. And according to Giardini, if I remember correctly, you can add up to 10% uh, water to thin the paint. So that's what I'll do, add a few drops before I apply more paint. And over time, the uh, water will evaporate. So we're gonna I believe that's why the paint does have a shelf life. According to the company, six months after opened and 12 months in general, but uh, yeah. so let's add a little bit of water to this. Yeah, it is here. Trying to figure out how I will do this. I will be able to do this. It is harder than I thought, so I'll get a spoon. 
One moment. All right, let's see if we can thin this out. I'm just gonna get a couple of drops. Just a couple. Not a lot of paint to begin with. And we'll see if that'll do it. I'll mix it around with my awl again. Trusty toilet paper. did put some stainless steel balls inside this container to allow for better mixing so you can just swirl it with them a little bit put some good paint on there some of the old stuff mixed off There's no dust. Okay. Okay. Can you see this? Yes, you can. We'll put it in another layer. Try to make this one a little bit thinner than the other one. And if you get any over the edge, you can just wipe it off. It does wipe off pretty well. Make sure you get the edges, have them connect. That way it will look better at those points if you do them at the same time. So then you won't be trying to connect two pieces of edge paint that have dried at different moments. They will dry together, producing a better edge. So now I've had my second coat of tan. I'll put this down to dry. Oh man, I don't seem to have done any actual damage, just gotten a little on my finger. You want to make sure that you do not get this on the leather, it will be hard to remove, from what I understand. Tiny bit more for the end. What I'm doing on the side, every time I tap it before I apply more, is I'm trying to remove any excess. You don't want to put too much on at once. And from what I can see, this layer is good too. So I'll let these dry. And we'll see how they turn out afterward. All right, so now we're gonna cut out the bag uh, sides. I have the two patterns here. 
And we're also going to cut out the portion that'll hold the uh, glasses in place. Can't see it too well. There. It's going to bend and hold the glasses. So let's do that. Hopefully it'll mess up because this is a nice leather. Let's see what we can do. First we're going to scratch it. And I'm, I printed out these, uh, well let's say first I use SolidWorks 3D modeling program to sketch out my pattern. And I printed it out 100% uh, zoom so you get a one-to-one. -one. I'm going to make sure that's right so that you can, uh, if you measure three millimeters, three centimeters, ten inches on your on your uh, model on the computer, you get that when you print it out on the paper. This is printed on, I believe it's 100 gram paper. Let's make a little thicker. Now you to uh, mm, there we go. Gotta see it. Allow you to uh, make a better better pattern, possibly even reusable. Hopefully. Let's see. There we go. Seems fine. So give it a little bit of room. Let's do the next one. Then make sure this one does not move. You can put weights on it. Or whatever you want. Yeah, keep it in place. Don't do what I do. I have to go over some lines one or uh, twice. Make sure you get a scratch you can see, and then get in a weird position if you have a weight or something holding your pattern in place. You're fine. Down here you can see that I scratched it slightly, but that'll it won't show up. The final product, yeah, it will be there, but it'll be unnoticeable. From what I understand. Now the next question is where I want to do this. I could fit it up here. I could do this to do it. One second. I'm going to measure this real quick. Another way I'll do it there. I'm using this uh, sitting on this pad for my knees, as well as not damaging the leather. That's also a nice benefit. And now you can see the leather wants to generally bend this way, because the way it was ruled. So I'm not going to fight against that. This has to bend anyway. I will just stick it here, that way, up here, that's where I cut out the uh, pieces for the straps, so I'll just go with that, why not, should be fine, the bend, yep, let's go for it, can you see that? Position. Better view. You want to make sure to not 
move the pattern at all, and you avoid moving the pattern by not pushing on the pattern while you're pulling the scratch all alongside. You can use it as a guide. You don't want to push too hard. It's not very good here. Let me give you a moment. Okay, let's do this curve without uh, moving this thing. It's done. Amazing. It is a great success. Can't quite see it in this terrible, terrible video. Here you can see part of it. Lines here. Yes. So let's cut out these three patterns that I've now marked. What we're using is an exacto knife. Why? Because what I have, the leather is relatively thin. Just uh, maximum 1.4 millimeters, as long as what they listed on the website is correct. And I'll be using a stainless steel ruler with a cork backing to keep it from sliding, at least theoretically. Let me adjust the light so I have a little better. A bit better uh, visuals. Hopefully that's not too bright for you. Let's go this one. Make sure it's lined up. Even on both sides. this Germ all the way through. Appears to be the case. Oh, it is not the case. Huh? Just shows you how sharp my razor blade is. <laughs> not so sharp. But it's what I have right now. As long as you're careful. Most cuts. Cuts aren't a problem.
loose. Let's go down to the end. If we curved, you might want to go about uh, two or three times. Make sure you get the curve right. You can always go a little deeper on the second pass. Don't want to press it too hard. You may slip. Again, you can always go second pass. Look like me. There. Finally, we have one piece. Can you see it? There we go. Now let's do the other two. But I'll do that by myself. So you don't have to watch me the whole time. <laughs> Alright, so now that the edges have dried, you can see that they're pretty good. It's nice with the uh, extra uh, matte coating, two layers on for durability. You can barely see any uh, inconsistencies, even if there are some. So now we're gonna line this up. Yeah, I'm just going to hold it down while well, I punch a hole for the first uh, rivet. First rivet's just going to be at this point. Make sure it's lined up. And it is. To hold everything in place while. Uh, Finding my hole punch. Uh, hold everything in place uh, for the sewing. So, double checking which size for the rivet. I believe it's this size. Okay, so we have this size. Fits in now. About right. Perfect. We'll line it up. It's okay if you leave a slight mark because it'll be covered by the uh, rivet anyway. At least that's the theory. Now, nice thing to do is to put an extra layer of leather behind so you can punch all the way through. That way you get a clean cut. You can clean on both ends. So now we can put one rivet in to hold this in place for the next rivet. Oh, and it was too small. So I will just have to Oh man, get it out somehow. Check it out. Yep, the back hole is too small. Turns out that one was too small. I'll just enlarge it. This is just to keep it in place, so we're not going to uh, keep it. I'm going to screw it all the way down. Before I do screw these down, I'm going to put some Loctite on there. Make sure they do not come apart. Okay. 
Now they're pretty good. Take this off. Now I can punch the second hole. Turns out it is covered. Any marks you make, because the rivet size are generally going to be not visible because of the large head. So let's put the second rivet in, just for now. Huh. Turns out. Turns out planning does help, because I planned the, uh, the distance for these. Doesn't look too bad. Let's hope the D-ring still fits. Sides are all right. That's a gift. Hopefully she'll appreciate it. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> I just realized the D-ring has to be inside because of, of course I'm going to now sew. So let me get the D-ring, undo all this so I can put it in, and I'll be back. So now, put the D-ring in. This is a bronze setup. So a bronze D-ring. Bronze screw rivets. I believe that's the name. Uh, if not, forgive me. Now we're going to punch the holes. With our four millimeter. Four millimeter? No, I believe this is three millimeter kit. Let's check. Three millimeter kit. There we go. Different one. So we have three millimeter. Stitching irons I bought from A I S K A E R Asker. I polish them a bit, it makes pulling out leather very easy, at least easier. And it helps. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff on the table, which happens. So let's get a punching pad. Give me one moment. Alright, so with the more perceptive, or perceptive among you, you've probably have noticed, is I have something underneath now. It's a little higher up. This is actually a large stone slab. Got from uh, a store that makes uh, um, gray stones. This is not a gray stone. <laughs> no, be, wor be worried, it's not haunted. I believe it's one of the stones that you walk on. Uh, I just went over there, asked them if they had any, explained what I needed it for. For uh, hammering, you need a large mass underneath so that you can uh, absorb the pounding. So, I asked them, this one was chipped. That's how you get free stuff. So let's see if we can get some uh, Nice stitches down here. I'm gonna start up at the corner. Yeah. I'd like the corners to be nice, so I'll start there. Mark it. In this case, it turns out just about the right size. For 
this. We need the four pronged one. As well. Did not expect that. And it fits just about in the center. So I'm just going to do it that way. Oh, no, I'll do it this way. I'll have three in the center, which you can just barely make out. Okay. So let's get started. Hopefully this is not too loud. Like I said, I did just get this new stone, so hopefully it does something. You want to hold the stitching iron vertical so that it goes all the way through and the stitches on the back side are straight. too loud, I believe because of the stone. So thank you, stone. And if at all possible, you should avoid using a metal hammer because it might damage your tools over time. Considering that you're hammering a metal bit with a metal tool, will probably dent. And considering no one's going to see the back side, this isn't too critical, but you want to keep it nice and even at least on the front. Backside's not perfect, but it's all right. It's surprisingly bad, but the front looks good. <laughs> so I'll stitch that now. Have some uh, stitching needles. John James stitching needles, the 004 size, which is, I believe, the smaller one recommended for uh, 0 0.6 millimeter stitching thread. Here I'm going to be using uh, Tiger Thread Ritzo 25 in pea green at 0.6 millimeters and the general rule of thumb is to go measure your piece all the way around and then quadruple that I'll go a little bit more because it's not so far three four I'll do five and maybe six six cut it and we can start Let me get this set up. Let me get this set up. All right, so here we have my stitching pony that I've modified with some magnets. After seeing some online, seems like a great uh, modification. Match them up. And there's lots of videos online how to uh, saddle stitch.
Put it on judgment on technique. <laughs> Uh, still just learning. Uh, it turns out I did that one wrong. So. Yeah. Do it again. So I'm just going to throw the needles for now. There's lots of videos online for how to uh, saddle stitch. So, watch those. Oh, and of course it falls. <laughs> of course. There we go. Do that again. working on getting the form all the way right the uh, modified stitching uh, horse definitely helps the magnets will every once in a while catch my needles which is great and once you get the hang of it it's not so bad you can do it pretty quickly. But this is a cheap one, so every once in a while you're going to tighten it. Maybe once I make the big bucks, I can afford a uh, $100 stitching horse. Like you see on uh, Pinterest, Instagram. So buy my products. Probably hard to see in the video, but uh, the pea green fits surprisingly well. To the brown leather. Now, pea green sounds kind of, uh, I don't know, not too appetizing. And there we go. One of the many dangers. So don't do that. <laughs> Especially if you're going to make this for someone. Well, a customer. If it's a present, they should be happy they're getting it. <laughs> Just kidding. Of course. Come in from the other side. There we go.
never stitched with uh, 0.6 millimeter thread before. It's actually quite nice. I was uh, stitching something with Lin Cable from Phil Ocean War. I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation. It's a French thread company. It's a long history. They make a very good linen thread, probably among other things. But the polyester thread, which I'm using right now, just glides much better. And I'm not afraid of breaking it, which I did multiple times with the fellow Shinwa. The linen thread. Sometimes you pull way too hard, which you have to uh, get work yourself out of the habit of anyway. Just noticing it's a little far away. Thing just came apart on me. <sighs> Here's where the benefits of a magnet. <laughs> just catches your thread. You don't want to pull too hard, or you will. The leather will begin to uh, show that you're pulling very hard. It won't stretch, but uh, it'll almost wrinkle. It shows a pea green thread, in case anyone's wondering, because the inside will be green as well. The tan edge coat was to match leather, obviously, and the thread will match the inside. Now for the last stitch, at least the last hole. Not, qu not quite a master of the back stitch, so I'm just going to kind of make it work. Yeah, these turned out pretty well. Try to get it underneath. Turned out pretty well. Next one, try to get above. Amazing. On camera it works. It's 
since this will be buried behind the uh, leather. I'm just going to tie it off in the back. Professionals are probably cringing at the bulkiness. You know what? No. You're all right. I can hear you crying. They're not too big. It'll show. Yes, yes, I know. So let's not do that. Considering that there are rivets, among other things. Just gonna cut it off up here. Can you see it better? I know this has all been quite difficult to see. Yep. Yeah. Sorry about that. Roommate interrupted me asking a question. How dare he? So now we have these two end pieces. I'm going to basically just melt them. And then I send it uh, real quick. There we go. A little bit more. There we have it. Not perfect, but it'll do. This will attach the strap to the bag. This will come out. I'm gonna put holes in the sides of the leather, namely this piece, for example. I already have, sorry, this way, holes up here, marked. And the rivets are just gonna go through here and hold on. So. So far, everything's going according to plan. Let's hope it continues. <laughs> 